Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to analyze a beam structure using flexibility method. So I have taken a question from previous year university, December 2019. Uh, the question was to analyze the continuous beam shown in figure using flexibility matrix method and find the bending moment or we have to draw the bending moment diagram. So for analyzing the beam using flexibility method, we have uh, 10 different steps. They are calculate the static indeterminacy. First step is to calculate static indeterminacy and according to the number of uh, static indeterminacy, we will assign system coordinates and then we will assign element coordinates and after that we have to calculate the fixed end moments and this fixed end using this fixed end moments we can develop a equivalent joint loads equivalent joint loads are nothing but they are just the opposite sign of fixed end moments thus we will get an equivalent joint load matrix and after that we will develop a force transformation matrix and element flexibility matrix Developing a system flexibility matrix can be done by using the equation delta is equal to F transpose delta star into F where F is force transformation matrix and delta star is element flexibility matrix. After that we have to develop displacement matrix. Displacement matrix can be developed using equation delta L is equal to F transpose delta star into PL. PL star where PL star is the equivalent joint load matrix which was obtained in step number four and then we will calculate a redundant matrix which will be the bending moments of system coordinates okay so let us see how can we analyze this given beam using this uh, going through all these steps so the first step is to calculate static indeterminate so look at this beam we have a fixed end moment, uh, sorry, fixed end and a roller and a hinged end. We know uh, for a fixed end there are three number of reactions and for a roller support there will be one number of reactions and for hinged end there will be two number of reactions. But in this figure when you see if we have provided a horizontal reaction over here it will not count since the other end is fixed end so here we will provide only one reaction for hinged end or it will be acting as a similar as roller end so we have a static indeterminacy can be calculated by using equation r minus 3 where r is the number of reactions and 3 is the number of static equilibrium equations so we have 3 plus 1 plus 1 which is 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 we can either use this method or we can calculate using equation m plus r minus 2j where m is number of members so we here we have uh, three members a b b c and c d okay so three members plus number of reactions they are 3 plus 1 plus 1 which is 5 minus 2 into number of joints joints are 1 2 and 3 okay so we have three joints so 8 minus 6 which is also equal to 2 so either way you can calculate the static indeterminacy so we have got the static indeterminacy as 2 so we are assigning two system coordinates in this beam structure or we are releasing two supports so i'm releasing the moment at a and uh, reaction at b okay now we are assigning element coordinates for this particular beam we have a overhanging overhanging uh, member okay so that member will not be counted for element coordinate so keep that in mind that you shouldn't count element coordinates for overhanging members so here we have only four element coordinates one star two star three star and four star now the fourth step is to calculate fixed end moment and develop equivalent join load matrix so fixed end moment can be calculated for udl 
it is AB in between AB. Uh, the UDL is 20 kN per meter with the length of 6 meters. So we have the equation for FEM minus W L square by 12, which is for UDL, uniformly distributed loads. So at this end it will be minus and this end it will be plus. So minus W L square by 12 and uh, for BA, which is plus W L square by 12, both will have a value of 60. In this question, uh, it was not mentioned at what point the 100 kN point load is acting. So, we are assuming it is acting at the center. So, if a point load is acting at the center, we have the fixed end moment can be calculated using the equation minus W L by 8. So, when you calculate FEM BC, we have the minus W L by 8, which is minus 50 at this end and plus 50 at this end. Okay. And due to this point load, since I have told you we are not counting element coordinates for the overhanging structure, so we have to provide this point load as a moment at C. Okay, so for counting this point load as a moment, you know how to calculate the moment if you have a point load. So the moment can be calculated by using multiplying just the value or uh, the load into distance. So 20 into 2 will have 40. And since it is acting at this end, it will be minus. So minus 40 kN per meter will be the uh, moment which cause, uh, which develop due to this point load at C. Therefore, the total moment at CB will be 50 plus 50 here and minus 40 here. So it will be 50 minus 40 which is 10 kilonewton meter. So these are the fixed end moments and now we will develop fixed end moment matrix. FEM matrix is minus 60 plus 60 minus 50 and plus 10. Now converting it into equivalent join load matrix. Equivalent join load matrix is just the opposite sign of the flux, uh, fixed end moment matrix. Okay, so minus 60 will turn to plus 60, plus 60 will become minus 60, minus 50 will become plus 50, and plus 10 will become minus 10. Now moving to the next step, which is development of force transformation matrix. So it is very easy. Uh, first, we have to find out uh, what are the ele uh, element coordinates. So here we have 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, and Four star. Okay, so I will write down one star, two star, three star, and four star. And we have two system coordinates. So they are one and two. So our first system coordinates is this, and second system coordinate is this one. So when I apply first system coordinate alone, the force develop in each element matrix uh, element coordinates are at one star there will be one moment or one and all other points will not have any effect due to this moment at uh, first system coordinate okay so the value will become one at one star and zero 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 at all other element coordinates and in this uh, second system coordinate is a vertical load okay so vertical reaction when a vertical reaction is provided the easiest method to find out force transformation matrix is just provide minus one at the left hand side and plus one at the right side of the particular vertical reaction and all other element coordinates will be taken as zero so here when you look at one star will be zero two star will be minus one three star will be plus one and four star will be zero so we have a force transformation matrix and we may need F transpose. So I'm just writing down the transpose of this force transformation matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1 and 0. Now moving to the sixth step, that is to develop force uh, element flexibility matrix. So element flexibility matrix has an equation, which is simple, that is L by 6 Ei into 2 minus 1 minus 1 2. So for each element, we have uh, two elements AB and BC. 
okay so for each element we have to find out this element flexibility matrix and the length for ab was 6 meters and for bc was 4 meters so here only ei and length value will vary so i'm just finding out the element flexibility matrix of each element see so we have ab 6 by 6 ei 2 minus 1 minus 2, 1 2 which is 1 by ei into 2 minus 1 minus 1 2 and for bc l was 4 meter so 4 by 6 ei 2 minus 1 minus 1 2 so when i take this 4 by 6 inside this matrix it will become 1.33 minus 0.667 minus 0.667 and 1.33 so this is the element flexibility matrix for element bc now combining all this into single a single element flexibility matrix we will get delta star is equal to 1 by ei 2 minus 1 minus 1 2 0 0 0 0 0 and the next matrix we are placing each element uh, flexibility matrix of each elements diagonally in this bigger matrix okay so we have obtained element flexibility matrix for the entire structure the second step is to develop system flexibility matrix so we have the equation for system flexibility matrix that is delta is equal to f transpose delta star into f so f transpose we have already f transpose with we with our hand so f transpose is this and delta star is this and f so we just have to multiply all these three matrices okay so multiplying all the matrices you will get the answer as 1 by ei 2 One, one, and three point three three. Don't don't just skip all these steps. You just have to, you have to do it manually. Then only you will be able to do it in exam. Okay. So just multiply all these matrices and find out whether your answer is correct. Okay. So uh, I have got this flexibility matrix is one by e i two one one and three point three three. The second last step, which is to develop displacement matrix. We have the equation for displacement matrix, which is F transpose into delta star into P L star. So F transpose into delta star, which we have multiplied just before in step number seven, and P L star is our equivalent joint load matrix. So I am just multiplying these two. If you are done manually, you have the answer for this multiplication okay so you just have to multiply that with the equivalent join load matrix so when you multiply this you will get the answer as delta l is equal to 1 by ei 180 253.33 so this was the displacement matrix developed now the last step is to find out the redundant so A redundant matrix can be calculated by using the equation x is equal to minus delta inverse delta l. So minus delta inverse delta inverse is our flexibility system flexibility matrix. And finding out the inverse, I hope you know how to calculate or uh, how to find out the inverse using your calculator. If you don't know, just uh, YouTube it. You can find it out. Okay, it's very easy. So Uh, delta inverse can be calculated then after the delta inverse calculation you can multiply this delta inverse with the delta l so multiplying this delta inverse with delta l you can see here we have ei and 1 by ei so both will get cancelled so our answer is minus 61.25 and minus 57.75 this minus will definitely matter so don't skip or don't forget to Uh, put this minus. So in this equation, we have minus delta inverse into delta L. So our redundant matrix is ready. Now we are moving to draw the bending moment diagram. So for drawing the bending moment diagram, we we just need these two values. So at uh, A, it is minus sixty one point two five, which is anti clockwise, and at B. Minus fifty seven point seven four five. So when you draw, first draw a straight line and mark A, B, and C. And since first is minus sixty one point two five, minus sixty one point two five means 
it is in anti clockwise so minus 61.25 then at b at right hand side minus will be getting with uh, clockwise and left hand side anti clockwise so we have 57.745 at b and at c you know uh, at c we have a point node acting at 2 meters from c so the moment will be 2 into sorry 20 kilonewton into 2 which is 40 that is also a negative so minus 40 we have minus 40 already there now we got the end moments uh, final end moments so just connect all these end moments okay so this is the final end moments that was obtained now we have to find out the free moments free moments are the moments calculated by using the existing loads so next step is to find out the free moments free moments are obtained from external loads that are acting in this structure so we have a udl over span ab and a point load between bc so for udl the free moments can be calculated by using equation w l square by 12 uh, sorry 8 w l square by 8 w as 20 and l square 6 square by 8 which will come around 90 so we have a 90 degree sorry 90 kilonewton meter bending moment acting between a b free moment is acting between a b next is a point load uh, which can be calculated by using w l by 4 so 100 is was the point load so 100 into 4 by 4 which is 100 itself so a free moment diagram can be drawn now we have to consider only the areas which are uh, isolated uh, we will neglect the areas which are common to free moment and uh, final bend, uh, bending moment or we can say actual bending moment is the difference between final bending moment and free moment so we will uh, hash we will hash down the areas which should be considered as the bending moment for this question so these are the areas so this is the the hashed areas are the final bendy moment diagram for this particular question okay thank you